The plot thickens and its origin comes right from suspected killer Corey Richens' DNA. Corey Richens is on trial for the sudden death of her husband, Eric Richens, and there's a whole host of situations in this case. Authorities believe Corey poisoned her husband, and autopsy reports say he had an extremely lethal amount of fentanyl in his system. In fact, he had five times the lethal amount in his system. But now, investigators have a new theory in the case, and it's that Corey got the idea of poisoning her husband from her own mother. They go even as far as to say Corey's mother, Lisa Darden, was involved in planning and orchestrating Eric's death. I'm Linda with It's a Crime, so now, let's get into it. Back in 2006, there was a mysterious death in Corey's mom's life. Lisa Darden was romantically involved with a woman who she was living with, and according to an affidavit, it said, in April of that year, her romantic partner died unexpectedly. Lisa's partner was a woman named Gertrude Lee Moore, who died suddenly on April 30th, 2006. And in her obituary, she was described as Lisa's best friend. But here is where it gets very interesting. In Gertrude's autopsy, it revealed that her immediate cause of death was a drug poisoning from an overdose of oxycodone. And she apparently had prescriptions for the drug and was reportedly struggling with abusing her meds. But according to the detective, he said she, however, was not in a state of recovery from addiction at the time of her death. Based on my training and experience, this would likely rule out the possibility of an accidental overdose. And the detective believes that because Lisa was close to Gertrude when she suspiciously died and had a close bond with Corey, that she may have played a role in planning and orchestrating Eric's overdose. And some of the things that Lisa said in public is also interesting. And I could see there being a, possibly a connection to it all, providing Corey with sort of a manual, so to speak, of how to commit and get away with murder. But what's interesting in Eric's murder was not only did he die from five times the lethal dose of fentanyl when given a Moscow mule drink, but in one of my previous videos, I talked about there being a small amount of Corey's prescription drug in Eric's stomach. And Eric's family lawyer talked about fentanyl and said there was a lot of fentanyl found in his stomach. A lot of it hadn't even metabolized into his blood yet. There was so much poison that he was administered that it hadn't even gotten into his bloodstream. Had the amount of drugs that were found in his stomach gotten into anybody's bloodstream, it would have killed an army of people. And according to the warrant, it said, I requested a review of the stomach contents and saw that Eric also had a small amount of quetiapine in his stomach contents. Eric did not have a prescription for quetiapine, but his wife had a prescription as well as the pills at their home. Now, it was also said that Corey asked for the Michael Jackson stuff and paid $900 for 15 to 30 fentanyl pills back in February of 2022. And three days later on Valentine's Day, Eric became very ill and thought he'd been poisoned and even mentioned that to a friend. Two weeks later, Corey asked for another $900 of fentanyl, received it, and by March 4th, Eric was dead. Coincidence? I don't think so. Let me know your thoughts below. Corey would have benefited from the multiple insurance policies she had on her husband. Side note, it was revealed in court that she had multiple policies on her three children as well. Eric's sister was on the stand and talked a lot in detail of these things about the insurance as well as being fearful for not only her life but her children as well. And according to prosecutors, Eric found out his wife had taken out a $250,000 home equity line of credit, drained $100,000 from his bank accounts, and ran up over $30,000 on his credit cards. Plus, Corey supposedly pocketed about $134,000 from her husband's business for taxes, according to legal docs. When Eric confronted her about the missing money, however, she allegedly promised to pay him back. And prosecutors claim that Corey had four life insurance policies totaling 
over $1.9 million. But before Eric passed away in March of 2022, he made some big changes. He tweaked his will, leaving everything to his sister, and was even thinking about splitting from Corey, according to his family. They also mentioned that Eric had confided in them about his worries that Corey might be trying to harm him, especially after he got violently sick a couple times after eating or drinking stuff made by her. Corey was in a whole lot of financial trouble. She allegedly owed nearly $190,000 in state and federal taxes, a million eight hundred forty-seven thousand to lenders, and an additional five hundred fourteen thousand in change she owed to Eric. So there certainly looks like there was a motive. What do you think? Not to mention there was a three million dollar mansion deal, two to three million that was closing in on the mix. More on that in a minute. Interestingly, Lisa Darden was the beneficiary of her partner's estate a short time before her death. Now, Sky Lazaro, who is the attorney representing Corey, she of course denied the detective's suggestion about being involved and said Lisa's partner was a victim of the national opioid crisis. She said, Summit County is well aware that opioid addiction and fentanyl overdose is a rampant problem throughout the country. According to the CDC, 150 people die every day from overdoses related to synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Which, she's not wrong, and even here in Canada, it's a major problem. But it's the combination of factors, isn't it, that make it really compelling. Corey's lawyer, Sky, called it a baseless conspiracy theory. But the detective said, it is possible she was involved in planning and orchestrating Eric's death. Now, around 9 p.m. on March 3, 2022, Corey and Eric were said to be celebrating Corey's closing on a $2 million mansion alongside Corey's mom, Lisa. And that's when Corey said she made Eric a Moscow mule drink to celebrate. And Corey owned a real estate company while Eric owned a successful masonry business. But a day after Eric died and the closing of the property, Corey threw a party where she was said to be drinking and celebrating with friends, much like Lori Vallow did when her husband Charles was killed and she threw a pool party later that day. Here's where it also gets interesting because Lisa was known to make some statements, which now that we know this other little piece of information, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Lisa stated, I believe Eric may have gotten pain pills and didn't realize that they had fentanyl in them. If you knew Corey, she would never, ever do this. Not only to Eric, but to those boys. And Corey's brother Ronnie stated, she loves her boys way too much to take their father away from them. They were in probably the best spot we've seen them in a long time at the time of his death. The family also said that Eric loved to party and loved having a good time. Corey's brother said, the simplest answer is often the correct one. It was most likely an accidental overdose. What do you think the simplest answer is? Lisa also accused Eric of cheating on his wife and giving Corey a black eye after Corey confronted this supposed mistress who happened to work with Eric in the masonry business. She said that Corey became suspicious when Eric's phone rang at home and she picked it up and the other woman on the other end quickly hung up. According to Lisa though, when Corey asked Eric about the affair, that Eric just confessed to it. Then the claim was that Corey phoned this alleged mistress the next day and yelled at her and demanded for her to leave Eric alone. Lisa stated, Eric responded angrily, and this wasn't the first time. He'd push her, he'd punch her. And the sister-in-law, Eric's sister, when she was in court, was talking about how Corey actually attacked her. And when this mistress was approached by the news, it was said that she denied the affair. But the drama doesn't stop there. There was a letter a little bit ago found in Corey's jail cell that Corey wrote to her mom and talked about her brother. But Corey denied it and said, you know what, it was for a book that she was writing, but really she got in trouble for witness tampering in this letter. But basically it instructed her mom to guide people on what to say about the case and suggested that her hubby had a drug addiction and his death was accidental overdose. And then on a phone call with her mom, she explained to Lisa that the note was part of a mystery book set in a Mexican prison. I'll have that video at the end of this or in the description box below, but speaking of books, 
We can't forget about the book that Corey published just over a year after Eric's murder to help her children with grief. And it's actually a pretty decent book, but it's now off the shelves because of the obvious. If you want to see what that full book is, I could do a video on it or maybe a YouTube short. Let me know if you want to see that in the comments below. Watch the timeline right here and the shadiness of Corey's behavior. It's quite telling.